assalamu alaikum let me start whatever we did in the class uh, yesterday uh, we talk about the addressing modes and i hope that we are clear with the with the ldd ldi ldx and ldm now the two addresses that are left let me do that with you and before i proceed on to the next topic uh, we are going to work on this relative addressing and you can see here they are talking about the many memory addresses used in the current location added to the operand for example jmr uh, by the way, what is this denoting? If you if you can recall the use of this hash, what does this denote? Binary. Exactly. It means that it means that you have to actually transfer the control to the instruction five locations up. And this is what is the meaning here. The control will be sent five locations after the the. You can simply say it's going to some situation where you're going to jump five locations forward. And that is what is and again remember with the use of hash, it means that this is the binary number. That we have to work on now the la next one is your symbolic addressing and that will be discussed right now it is used in semi language programming uh, a label is used instead of a value now you can see the use of label is going to be a little bit easier for the humans as compared to the use of a number and that is why you can see uh, uh, you can see here an example is given to you uh, if the memory location with the address labeled my store contain the value 20 so what we'll be doing is we will be using the label uh, my store instead of the value uh, 20 as such because it means the same but that will be easier for us to comprehend and to work on as compared to working with the values and that is why this is allowed in your assembly language programming so you can see symbolic addressing how is it being done uh, you can see the use of the uh, by the way this label is a user defined word and there are two ways of handling either you have label and then you have opcode and operand uh, by the way I hope that we can recall what is opcode and what is operand Yes. Can we recall what is opcode and what is opcode? Opcode is? Yes, what is opcode? Gee, beta, we have been talking about the term opcode quite often. So what is opcode and what is operand? Come on. This is the basic thing that we have been talking about, like STO, ADD, they all are your opcodes, INC, DEC, they all are opcodes because these are the instructions. And operand is what you work on. Like, for example, I hope that this is what we all are clear. You should not forget this thing, opcode and operand. Then we have another way that we have label, and then we have the, gives a symbolic address label to the memory location with the, con with the contents in. So there are two ways of handling this label. Either we have with the label, and again, you can see the colon sign. This colon sign is indicating that it's a label. Now, just a sample uh, program. Now, if you pay attention to this line, this is a high-level language programming where you can see three variables, first, second, and third are being added, and the result is stored in the, in the variable total. And the same task, you can see this program is going to be done in so many lines near assembly language. The way I talk Now, and I'm moving on to this one. You can see here, as I've been talking about, this is one command and that one command is broken down into a series of steps. And that one command is, you can see, by the way, this one is a label, start. And you can see this start has an opcode and operand. LDD is an opcode because that is an instruction. And what is it working on? It's the operand. I, I hope that we are clear with the term opcode and operand. Uh, just to make you comprehend, I said that opcode assume it just like an action that you're performing. And uh, operand is what you work on, and is what you have to work on. And you can see here that this is my LDD is, by the way, what is LDD? D. Direct address. Direct yeah, That's great. We all remember. So you can see LDD is first. Means the instruction is to perform this activity on this operand. And then we have ADD. By the way, what does ADD do? Add. It says that whatever is written here, the variable second, the value will be added to the variable first. And then you can see ADD once again, third. It means all these tasks that were done in one line are done in three separate lines and then we are saying sto total and then we are ending the r this line so you can see here this one line is broken down into a series of steps i i kept on talking about the same instructions and every instruction has an equivalent binary code 
So here you can see LDD first, ADD second, ADD third, STO total and end is going to make the same task as we have done in the beginning. Now you can see first is 20, second is 30, third is 40. And then we can see the total will be holding the result. In the beginning, definitely it will be zero because it's going to be initialized with a zero. And then you can talk about the instruction that is being done. Accumulator will be holding the result of all the uh, three values being, being added and they will be stored in the variable total. So STO is for storage. So are we okay with this? Yes or no? Uh, are we okay with this? Uh, by the way, I'll be expecting you people to do the activities that, that are given. As you can see, I have actually, uh, I mean, I was just planning to do this activity with you, but this one is a little simpler. So I guess that you will be able to uh, do it a little bit yourself as well. And then LDD, you are clear with, so you can handle it yourself. But now let me move on to this. Any questions regarding this material? The use of assembly language instruction to carry out the same task as you did with that one line. Any questions before I proceed? Yes, Vita, any question? No. Now, let me move on to a question from the past paper, and then we'll... Now, this is November uh, November paper, November 16. As you can see, the variance is 1, 1. And you can see the same instructions as you did earlier. LDD, LDX, which we did yesterday, add also, uh, add the contents of the given address. CMP is something that is new. JPE is something that is new. And gen then the last one is JPN and JMP. So you can see here, CMP, as the name implies, compare. Compare the contents of ACC with the contents of address. So definitely, we are going to make two comparisons. One is going to be comparing the uh, accumulator's value with the whatever is present on the given address. So JP is very simple. It, it is going to follow a compare instruction. Jump to address if the, compar is if the comparison is true. And JPN is, as you can see, by the way, N is for no. Like this is how I can... Um, um, uh, remember as well as well and if the comparison instruction is resulting in a false then it will be J the use of jpn the same as we talked about if and else the same is done here with the help of jpe and jpn i hope that we are clear yes yes and as we did, did right now jump five means the jump five locations jump to the given address that is what you can see in the way uh, we talked about jump with the hash five that means that you have to jump five locations extra or five instructions are up. Out is for output. And then we have end to end the end, end the routine. Uh, by the way, the question is, uh, I think this is what we can do easily. LDD, do we need practice of this LDD and LDX also? Do we need practice or can you, can I rely on you people that you can do it on, on your own as well? Yeah, we can do it. Do it, all of us. But you need to have practice of this uh, now. Let's move on to this one. This is my trace table, which I didn't touch yesterday. And I moved on to the next topic. Complete the trace table below for the following assembly language instructions. And you can see this is my assembly language program. But along with that, I have an ASCII code in the character. When they are just uh, not the, uh, like 40 is this one, 50 is 2, 80 is P, 90 is Z, and 100 is small d. Now, this is my question. And now I'm asked to fill in the trace table below. By the way, this is trace table. The same trace table as we had been talking about, the same trace table is here also, but although it is dealing with some other values, uh, not the one that we talked about the programming. This is actually the trace table of our um, uh, memory of our registers. So you can see, let's just start from here. And the first instruction that I can see here is, uh, Uh, complete the assembly, complete the race table below for the following assembly language program. The program contains generative values. As you can see here, the values I mentioned here. So let's just move one by one. The first instruction is LDD 800. So what is LDD? LDD 800 ka matlab kya hua? What will happen with this one? Direct addressing, isn't it? So what will happen with this one? As you can see, LDD 800 will result in loading the, by the way, here I'm supposed to talk about the locations, as you can see here, memory address is 800, 801, 802, and 803. So what is going to be in 800? You can see it's going to be 40 because you can see the values, again, locations from 100 till 112 are 112 ending. And then you can see from locations 800 to 803, there are, there are some data values. 
So when I talk about this one, I have to actually talk about uh, accumulator situation and the output as well. So 800 is holding 40. That's why you can see 40 is mentioned here. 801 is holding 50. That's why you can see 50 being mentioned here. 802 is containing the value 0. That's why you can see the value 0 here. And 803 is containing the value 90. That's why you can see the value 90 here. Sir, so, but it only told us to LDD 800. So no. why are these 801, 802 values here? Because they are talking about that what is stored in 800, 801, 802, and 803 before the execution of the program. So remember that the data is already present there. So they are just they are filled in some data values. They talked about that memory addresses 800 is holding 40. Memory address 801 is holding 50. Memory address 802 is holding 0. And 803 is holding the value 90. Is any problem till now? Are we okay with this? Yes or no? Just talking about the data being picked up from here. And then I'm asked to work on the instructions one by one. I'll be working on the instructions that are written from locations 100 till 112. And I'll be filling in the trace table below. Any problem till now? Understood? Yes. Is this first line where the data is already filled in uh, clear to all of us? Yes or no? May I move ahead? Peter? Yes, teacher. Now, thank you. Now, the first instruction on location 100 is LDD 800 means that direct loading of whatever is present on 800. So what will happen in, in the in the ACC? What will I write in this ACC? What do you think? What should I write here? Simona. 800. Nee, 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 nee. LDD means what? Direct addressing. So what will what will uh, what will happen with this one? It will move to 800 location and will pick up the data. Remember that this what we get is the data that is present on this location so i will not pick up 800 i'll pick up 40 and this 40 will be moving to our accumulator are we clear ldd better no, right? but if we have said that if we only have ldd 800 karne ko bola, to we have to put the values in 801 mein bhi, aur 802 mein bhi, so, so, mein bhi. So, yeah, say, because the values are already look one is the program one is the data this is my program from location 100 till 112. It's the program. Okay. And remember, the memory contains both the data and the program. So definitely it is telling you that value all the that how will you how will you know the values then? You need to know the values also so you, you can talk about the what will happen on the data. Like if the values were not there, uh, how will you work on the data? That is why they have mentioned 40, like for 800 is holding 40. Maybe it is there, these are some variables. The way we talk about first, second, third, maybe they are variables. Or maybe there were two values that were there, so you are supposed to maybe add them up. So data will be there, only then we can work on the data. So they have filled in for me, and I don't have to actually concentrate on this one. I only need to fill in the uh, the accumulator, and I need to work on the outputs. Are we clear until this point, yes or no? Jibida, are we clear, yes or no? So what we what happened is the first instruction was LDD eight hundred, and this means direct direct addressing. And for this, what will happen? It will move to location eight hundred, and it will pick up whatever is present on eight hundred location. So what will I get? What is present on eight hundred location? Forty. Forty. That is why a accumulator will hold forty. G, are you all clear? Like a Liba, near. Are you okay with this? LDD ka matlab kya hua? Yes, teacher. 800 will be, uh, it will be search, searching the location 800 and will pick up the data that is present on the 800 location and will get 40 from here. Are we clear? Yes or no? Now, the next instruction is add. Add whatever is present on 801. So what do you think will happen after this execution? What is present on 801? Yes. 50. So what will be an accumulator then? First it was 40. Now what will it become? 50. It will move on to 801. And what is present on 8 at 801 location? 50. So what will happen with this one? It will add 40 and 50. Was it said add? It didn't say anything else. It said add. Add ka matlab? It will actually add the newer contents to the current contents of accumulator. So this is what we have, we have seen right now. So you can see here, it will actually add the contents of your accumulator 
to the value that is mentioned here. Is, is ka matlab 801 pe, whatever is data present, you add that data with the current contents of ACC. So since currently the ACC is holding 40, so it will add 50 to 40 and it will become 90. Exactly. So this will hold 90 now. Are you clear? Are you clear? Yeah. It will hold 40 here, then it will hold 90 here because you have added the contents of location 801 that was containing 50. And that is why you can see, that is why it is making your life easy, just to make you understand what is happening uh, stage-wise. Jibita, may I move ahead? Yes or no? Here, yeah, we don't write 50 and we just directly add 50 to 40 and write 90. Exactly, exactly. because in reality, it will be done uh, by, by the calculation will be, will be performed. Yeah? Contents of accumulator are 40. So the new value 50 will be added to the older contents of 50, uh, older contents uh, 40 and the result 90 will be stored in accumulator. Okay, teacher. Okay, because this is what we talked about that accumulators uh, is meant to hold the, uh, the accumulator is present in your, uh, in your, where is it present by the way? ELU and definitely it will be holding the result. It will be holding the, uh, the contents that, we, that are being worked on and the result also. So that is why you can see accumulator is holding the results 40 earlier and then 90. Are we clear with these two instructions? May I move ahead with the third one, STO? Yes. What does STO do actually? Store. Store. And what does it say? STO 802. What will be the change? The accumulator will be still 90. Definitely there is no change in accumulator. But then you can see the contents are going to be moved or stored in 802 location. So it means that what where will be the change? In this line, you will show, show the change here in your 802 location that will be storing the value 90. Are we clear? Because it said the instruction said STO802 means whatever the results of the accumulator are, they will be stored in your 802. By the way, if you recall the presentation that I showed you regarding uh, the processor, fundam processor fundamentals, the fetch execute cycle. If you can recall that two uh, slide presentation, that was dealing with the same concept. Once you encountered the store instruction, it was moving the data from the accumulator, uh, from the accumulator to the requ required location. So that is what is the idea behind that with this instruction STO, the accumulator value will be moved to the location 802 because that said, STU at second location. Are we clear? Yes or no? Yes. Are we all clear? All six, all five of us? Yes. Now moving on to the next instruction, as you can see, LDD 803 means what does what does it do? What will happen with this 803? What will happen with this LDD? Once again, you are encounter you are encountering the word LDD, the instruction LDD. Here the value in 803, that is 90, will be stored directly exactly. in accumulator. Exactly. That's great. So you can see here, the opcode is LDD, means uh, diet addressing. So it will actually move on to 803rd location and will get the data from 803, that is 90. And that is why you can see it either here or you can see it from here. And the contents of your accumulator will be, again, once again, 90. Any problem till now? You say we'll write uh, LDD in accumulator, uh, like uh, 90. Then we will definitely be filling in 40 earlier because of the first instruction. Then 801 added, location of 801 data added, that will be 90. And then it will be 90 once again because of encountering this uh, instruction of LDD 803. It contains the value 90 once again. So the third okay. line will contain again 90. Any problem till now? No. Now it says no problem till 103. Now let's move on to 104. That says CMP 802 means compare. Compare what with what? Comparison of the accumulator content with the data that is present at 802. So what is present at 802? Yes, what 90. is 90. And what is present in accumulator at the moment? That is also 90. 90. Comparing means that compare the, the contents of accumulator with the contents of whatever is present at this location. So comparison was being done. So what is it resulting in? Is it, uh, uh, now you can see if 
the contents of your accumulator are 90. So again, just see for yourself, it is actually comparing ki kya accumulator ki contents 90 ke barabar hai. And just assume it just the way we have been programming. So it will compare the contents of accumulator with your value 90. Kya ye barabar hai? Ye ye barabar nahi hai. What yes. will be barabar hai? So where will it go? Will it go to 107 or will it go to 110? See, JPE means Again, uh, if you if we move the back. 107. 107. Yeah, JPE is actually meant, let me move back to the, uh, see, this is my CMP. Compare contents of ACC with the contents of address. We compared the contents of uh, ACC that was 90 with the contents of 803, 802, because that was present in the address. And JPE means following the comparison, jump to address if the compare is true. JPN Following a compare instruction, ju jump to address if the comparison is false. So it's an if situation that is being handled here. So you can see here, since the two values are equal, that's why what will happen? Will it jump or will it, will, will it jump to the required location? Yes or no, it will jump, fine. So you can see here what will happen with this one is, since the contents of both the accumulator and the given address are equal, that's why it will result in... Hmm. Compare 802, 802 contains 90, and accumulator contains 90. Since the comparison is successful, they are equal. That's where it will move to JP. JP ka matlab, go to JP, move 107. So it will move to 107. So it will jump, it will ignore this line because the condition is true. The way we have been talking about if condition, it will move here and store 802. So what will happen? What is Whatever is stored in accumulator will stored and will be stored at 800 second location so what will happen now 90 value will be stored at nine at location 802 so you will be writing 90 once again again exactly see beta we just follow the instructions that is why we talk about the trace table now trace table is easy because we simply follow the instructions one after the other that's why the the the, the uh, it becomes easy for us are we clear yes yes jpe 107 means 107 pay uh, ja, ja or kya ki ja store the value at 802 and then what the value is it is going to be 90 that will store from accumulator at this location 802 and then it says out out means whatever is present then actually display that value so what is 90 actually 90 is z so in the output column i'll have the output of z so you have ye that ye pura ka pura kaam se z ki output ka hai have you understood yes or no Yes. Can I hear? Yes. Or doesn't know that she has joined from. I'm sorry. I just now saw her message. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, so sorry for her. Um, has she sent you people a message as well? You know, no. Uh, I just now saw her message. Um, oh, oh, I'm really sorry for that. Now, moving on to this one, let's see. Um, now, the next one is out. Whatever is the, uh, the contents of your accumulator, they will be output. And you can see the way we will be comparing it with the, the value. And what we get is my uh, result Z. And I'm finishing my program because that is the end. The last instruction is end. Any problem till now? Keep it up. G, any problem till now? No. Samajagi, Bilpul? Yes, just we need a little bit. It's, it's not difficult. It's a, it's a, something that you can actually score very easily if you've understood the basic thing. Just keep on referring to the table and keep on doing that. Now, I hope that we are done with 4.2 and we just need a little bit of practice and we'll be able to manage this 4.2 now. Isn't it, Inshallah? Will we be, will we be able to manage? Inshallah? Now, let's move on to this option of my... Uh, 4.3, that is again a simple topic, not a difficult one. The first thing that I need to know here is my shifting. And here you can see shifting means that you, you can either perform logical shift 
or you can perform arithmetic shift or you can perform cyclic shift. Let me start with a simple uh, logical shift that deals with, it says very simply that bit shifts out of the register are replaced with zeros. For example, an 8-bit register. Now, let me talk about an example. Let me take uh, an example myself and let me do it with your people. And definitely with this, you will be able to comprehend this very quickly that what happens with this work. Assume that I have, again, the same combination as you remember, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1. This is something that you need to remember. Assume that I talked about, I have the values 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and 0. What is the equivalent Denny value for this byte? I'm talking about this right now. At the moment, we're talking about shifting. And we are talking about the shifting, which is LSR and LSL. Right now, we are talking about the logical shift. OK? I talked about I was asked to shift the data one place to the left. It means that every single bit will be moving left. I think you, this is what you talked about that we have done earlier, we are aware of, but some of the students are not aware of. So let me do it with you people. Yes, I said that with this shift, what happens is, I said left shift. Left shift means all the contents will be shifted. It means in this scenario, this left shift will result in this bit moving out of the byte completely. As you can see, it was mentioned there that this shifting is going to result in the values moving out. So what will happen then? The result will be the zero is moving out. So this 64 that was present here will become will move on to 128. The 32's data will move to 64. The data that is present on uh, 30, uh, 16 will become a part of 32. And 16, uh, sorry, sorry, it will be one. And then it will be zero here, moving from here. It will be zero here, moving from here. It will be zero here, moving from here. And it will be zero, moving from here. Any problem in comprehending this till now? Yes, are you clear? All the bits have shifted one place to the left. It means resulting in this bit moving out of the byte completely. Because we are performing logical shifting in this, the values are moving out and the empty locations are storing a zero. Are we clear with this? Yes or no? Any problem in comprehending this left shifting? Yes, are we clear? Yes. Okay, now, if I talk about this, the result, Initially, the value was 16, as you can see from here. But when you had performed this shift, light left shift one place, what is the result on your um, uh, on your byte? What is the what is the result? 30. 30. What strikes your mind then? Just paying attention to the data, although you are not supposed to rote learn this. But what strikes your mind if you pay attention to these uh, details? What is it actually? What is happening here? G. Hmm. Can anyone ask you what is the result? What what will have, what will be your answer then? Keep it down. It is multiplied by exactly. It is multiplied by two. Is coming up. What the value is going to be multiplying by two, and definitely we can we can see ourselves that what will be the result once uh multiply. By two, if I'm shifting twice, it will be multiplied by. Yes, multiply. If I'm shifting twice, well, what will happen then? What will be the result then? Multiply by. Gee, what do you think, Beta? One. No, if I'm, if I'm, I've shifted two places. So let's let's do it. You you will do it. This is Four. my this is my initial value. Now, I have shifted two places to the left. This is my original data. And this data has shifted to two places to the to the left. What will happen then? What is the new value? Quickly do it. G. Initially, it is 16. And you have shifted two places. It means how many bits will be moving out? 16. How many bits will be moving out? These two bits? Oh. And what will be the newer value then? G, what will be the newer value then? 64. 64. But let's do let's show it first. No? You need to show the shifting. Zero. 
these two bits are coming out of the byte completely and then you will be having 0 1 then four uh, four zeros one two three four zeros will be there and then the can you understand this yes and the location that are that are left out will be filled in by zeros as well g are we clear yes yes or no are we clear with this any problem being faced by anyone G beta, are we clear? So you can see the result is going to be 64. So what does it mean actually? 64 indicates it is multiplied by G. What do you deduce out of this? Uh, may I know your observation what is happening with this one? It is going to be multiplied by 4. This one you can see is with these shifts it will happen that uh, the data is definitely going to be multiplied by 2, then multiply by 4, then multiply by 8, then multiply by 16. In this manner, you can see that the shifting results in the data being multiplied if you are moving towards the left-hand side. Now, uh, I'll be rejoining. And until that time, I want you to perform uh, three shifts uh, and then find out, no, four shifts. And let me know what is the result.